The purpose of this video is to describe how the battery charging system works on our 2008 Endeavor. It's uh, basically the same model as the Diplomat. The uh, year models vary a little bit uh, from about 2007 and I don't know how much further used this particular type of system. It's called a bird system. The little board up in the top left of the front run bay which is below the driver left side. The little circuit board controls a large solenoid very often referred to as a bird solenoid which is in the battery compartment in this particular year and model. You'll see various connections inside this front run bay where the bird will actually monitor each battery bank. The house battery and the engine battery of course. The bird board in the front run bay, BIRD on this year and model, is a bi-directional relay delay. It turns this relay on, often called the big boy, via the purple wire. It sends 12 volts to that purple wire. The white wire is the ground. You could reverse those wires and it wouldn't matter. That solenoid does not care. That purple wire also carries the emergency start signal. If your engine batteries are dead, you can simply push the button. It will engage that relay slash solenoid and combine both battery banks and hopefully you'll get the engine started which then will allow the alternator to do its job. It's different on this versus some prior model, year models, is that the board up front is not a bird, it's not bi-directional, it's an ERD, an IRD. It does not charge the batteries both ways. Explaining that, that battery control board up front, the bird, senses when there is a charging voltage on either battery. If one side is being charged, that board sends a signal via the purple wire to this solenoid and it combines both battery banks. It does not matter if that charging voltage is from the engine, which is the alternator, or from the inverter slice converter, converter on this model when you're plugged into shoreline or have the generator running. One thing that's unique about the bird on this model is that driving down the road, your alternator's charging both banks of batteries, you turn the generator on, the converter kicks in, now you have two competing charging sources. Well, that bird up front is smart enough to know that the generator is running. There's a generator signal input, and it will actually disable that function at that time. So it will keep those two, two sources from fighting each other. If you did not have that disabling function and you allowed that to continue, it wouldn't cause any damage, but it confuses the alternator fail light relay and, and you'll get an alternator fail light on your dash sometimes. One workaround often is just to turn on the headlights or some sort of load, 12 volt load, to get that voltage pulled back down a little bit. That'll usually fix it. And there'll be no harm caused, but it can be quite annoying. In a little while, I'm gonna change that solenoid and I'm gonna show you how to, how to diagnose it. The solenoid itself runs continuously and it gets extremely hot. If I stick my fingers on that right now, it'll blister them, literally, if I'm not very careful. So, I've added a modification to the new one I'm going to install, and it'll have fan on it. So, anytime that solenoid's engaged, it'll be blowing a fan on it. Now, will that help? I don't know. I highly recommend that you replace this solenoid every three to five years. It's such a common failure item get it all the time on the forums about battery issues and charging issues and they'll lead you right back to this. Now there's a lot of workarounds and there's a lot of different devices you can put in place of it. All of it requires some additional wiring 
and some other difficulties and issues along the way. So if you can possibly keep it stock, the stock system works quite well. This thing's 15 years old. That said, this will be the third or fourth time that I've either replaced this relay or overhauled it. So it, it works very, very, very hard. Now I live in it full time, so ours is plugged in all the time or there's a generator going. So it, it, gets, it gets worked much harder than the normal one would. But I'd still say replace it every five years just because of the known issues of the contacts. And when you do replace it, replace it with one with silver contacts. When I get this one replaced, I'm actually going to disassemble it and video it and we'll take a look at the contacts and see what they look like. The current temperature of that solenoid is approximately 150 degrees as measured with a infrared thermometer. I have a built-in, or I should say an added-on, voltage meter. This is actually from my solar panel, so it's part of the solar controller system, but it allows me to check my battery voltage. You'll see that the one battery is showing 13.77 volts. Battery 2 is showing the exact same voltage. If I was to come back here and use a voltmeter on that solenoid, you would see the exact same voltage on those two large bolts. A very simple test to know if that solenoid is being told to be activated is to use a very cheap 12 volt test light. And I do mean cheap. One with a light bulb inside is fantastic. I prefer that over some fancy digital thing. It'll actually put a little bit of a load on it. This one will be the ground side. And these can be reversed. The solenoid doesn't care which way. You'll notice I have a connector here that I can pull apart which will disengage that solenoid. To further show how this operates and to diagnose it, I've disconnected my solar charging on both battery banks. I've disabled the big boy solenoid so the batteries are isolated between each bank. This is the current voltage on the house batteries. They're being charged from shoreline and the uh, converter, of course. I have a load on the engine battery side right now. I have the ignition key on, blowers on, lots of lights on. So we'll show you what that voltage is on that bank. As you can see, the voltage on that bank is considerably lower. <clears throat> That's with the solenoid disconnected, excuse me, disabled. I will enable that and show you what the voltage comes back up to. As you can see, the voltage is coming up very slowly though. That voltage should almost immediately be the same as the house battery voltage. What that indicates to me is that the contacts on that solenoid are defective. So after we get done replacing the solenoid, we'll do the same test and see how fast that the voltage comes up on the engine batteries under the same conditions. Let me get this right. This is the engine batteries, 12.28, solar panel disconnected, bird disabled. We'll measure the house batteries. As you can see, they are 13.2. Solar disabled, the magnum energy converter is doing its thing. It's a good charging voltage right there. In a moment, I'm going to connect the bi directional and we'll see how fast that voltage comes up. In order for me to do this test, I'm going to have to stop the recording and stop it again to turn it on. So I'll try and count the seconds it takes for it to come up to what the uh, house batteries are. In a matter of seconds, voltage is coming right up. This is the house batteries, 13.07. And this is the engine batteries, 13.07. That's with the lights on and fans blowing and all kinds of things going. 
So that new solenoid is doing its job. Changing that solenoid is an easy job. Be made simpler by turning off the shoreline, disconnect, turning the batteries off. However, I kept pretty much the house side going the full time using extreme caution. I am a certified electronic tech. I kept bat batteries are covered up, my wrenches are insulated. I was very, very, very careful in doing that. We're in the central Florida, it's hot. We have a fur baby inside, didn't want the air conditioner to come off, so all's well. I want to note the insulation on my wrenches. I was also wearing heavy gloves while taking off the large wires. Dropping one of those two watt cables is a recipe for serious fire or burns, so the gloves are there so I could possibly rip the cables out if necessary, break them loose from some deadly short. For the second part of the video, I'm going to show how to disassemble the old solenoid. And when I took it out, I discovered that I have rebuilt this once some time ago. See the Phillips screws there? And those nuts? That's where rivets live. To take this apart, you have to drill those rivets out. I'll begin by removing those screws and bolts. And we'll see what we got from there. It's been a long time. A little tiny bit of prying from the utility knife. Pop the cover off. This solenoid has been showing some serious signs of heat. To take the next step after you get the bottom off, you have to unsolder these two wires from each side. But as you can see, this insulator is really, really, it's baked. So we'll see. I think number five said, no disassemble. Well, here it is, coming apart. Coils are showing some serious signs of heat down inside of that. This all on our right looks rough. I'm very interested to see what it's going to look like when it pulls. It has taken some persuasion to get that inner piece to begin coming out. The last time I had it off and overhauled it, it's obvious I put some thermal compound in there to help, help it live a little bit longer, but here it is. That's part of it. We'll look down inside. That is the actual contact mechanism that literally is pushed, pulled up and pushed down. And let's have a look at the contacts. I rest my case. You couldn't ask for a better example of why I recommend changing this every three to five years. If I ask you to change a fuel filter or an oil filter every three to five years, you'd be shocked if, if it wasn't wasn't every six months to a year. In this case, you say, oh no, it looked perfectly fine. It was working. Yeah, it might have worked once or twice or when it wanted to work. Did it work all the time? Absolutely not. You can see the contacts down there. I'm going to pull those out. As you can see, those contacts actually look a little bit moist. And from the green, you can tell they have been getting moist. How that happened on a sealed component like that? Well, when they heat and cool, they suck in air and they can't get it out. This relay, the way it is mounted, and most of the motor arms I've seen is this way, with the big contacts coming out the bottom. Moisture cannot get out of there once it gets in there. Even if you mounted it this way, you would have some difficulties. I would think that perhaps drilling a small hole on either side would be the solution to adding some longevity to this. Although I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick by my change the darn thing out every three to five years. You will save yourself so much misery. What happens with these contacts is you'll... The solenoid will kick in one time. It'll make a find a good place and it'll be happy and you'll think everything's working. The next thing you know, you come out, you find dead batteries. And you're wondering why the system's not working. Well, there's your answer right there. Poor maintenance. And I'll blame mine on 
health issues for the last several years. So that's no excuse, but that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I hope this has helped, helped anybody that has some concerns about their birds. And get in there and get that doggone solenoid changed.